Namaskar. Was Kerala the next target after Coimbatore? This is the question that today we want to have Sri Rajesh Pillai. He has been on our channel before. He has made some very impactful videos. He comes up full with data and information. And we are going to trace some things going back in time because nothing happens instantly. There's a lot of preparation that goes into it. So to hear all about that and the latest status on the 873 police officials who have been named as being helping PFI. What has the Kerala state government done about it? To know all this and more, let's welcome our guest of the evening, Sri Rajesh Pillai. Rajesh ji, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram, Namaskaram, Monakam, Monakam. Thank you, to thank you, you for hosting me. Thank you for hosting me once again. Thank you for inviting me to your, uh, you know, very prestigious platform. Rajesh Pillai ji, you should know that lately we have been making some very strong, hard-hitting videos on China. And now I ah. have a fan base of at least six, you know, what I call as pet monkeys. These six pet monkeys will write <laughs> and run down the entire comments section with some garbage nonsense, verbal diarrhea. <laughs> ah, so, I know, I know. That always happens. That, yeah, yeah. So that means that there is some impact. Somebody, somewhere, someone's, uh, you know, uh, some organ is hurting. So let's let's leave it at that. So uh, Rajesh. Yeah, 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 exactly. Now, yeah. everybody... Again, we were one of the first ones to say Kerala is the laboratory for all the mischief that you know, some elements are doing. And, and now the, the the truth is beginning to dawn on the rest of the country. Rajesh ji, tell us a little bit about the impact of this failed Coimbatore car blast. And we had some data from before where some thousands of kilos of gelatin was being smuggled from Tamil Nadu to Kerala border. You know, just draw us out what is happening in Kerala now after the PFI ban. Yeah, uh, um, uh, to let you know, it is not one incident. Actually, twice uh, oh, gelatin wow. sticks were uh, yeah captured uh, on Kerala Tamil Nadu border uh, near Valaya in Palakkad district. Uh, the first one was in uh, November 2020, some two years back. 40 boxes of tomatoes. You know, under that there uh, th there was around uh, 7,500. Uh, gelatin sticks and uh, detonators so after that last uh, august also another 8000 so uh, you can very well imagine if you are uh, actually catching one or two consignments there could be another 10 or 15 consignments going Sneaking through because yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely because officials are also you know um, somewhat corrupt in all these Mean quick, not, not. Not. so and <laughs> yeah. uh, as you as you know uh, uh, the uh, anti national forces or terrorists or whatever you say they have infiltrated well into the system in the last uh, as you said in the beginning it doesn't happen uh, just like that it happens o over a period of time and in kerala uh, uh, there is a history of 30 years three decades uh, of Islamic terrorism being uh, patronized and being supported and being, you know, you know, nurtured by the system. So uh, it is nothing surprising that these kind of things are happening in Kerala. Uh, regarding Coimbatore blast, um, uh, Sriji, I hope uh, you must have already done many videos on that. Uh, yes, we but, have. Uh, it was def yeah, it was definitely a big big plan i mean to create a black deepavali on in tamil nadu and as well as you know have an impact a pan india impact maybe after pfi ban this could have been one incident or one series of uh, incidents uh, it could it could have been a serial blast so to you know to give these people some confidence as you know, most of them have gone underground and many of them have lost hope. And actually, uh, it's a mob psychology. So once you, uh, 750 CRPF officers and a few uh, NIA officers could just handle them like that. So because it's a mob psychology. Individually, no one is capable of doing anything. That is their psychology. So actually they have lost that confidence self-confidence that is my reading at least in kerala uh, but uh, 
to give them some sort of confidence this kind of blast or some activity was necessary and they have been planning uh, i don't know whether you have noticed as a few um, one hour back i think um, news has come that this jamisha mubin who was killed in that uh, su suicide attack he was staying near that temple on rent for some months and uh, just only last month only he vacated that rented house so he was staying very close to that sangameshwara temple uh, that is one uh, piece of information that has come out uh, just now in the evening uh, so that is a very important thing and uh, there are also uh, information saying that they had created a list of temples to be attacked in and around Coimbatore and in other places also. Uh, I have a list of places uh, which they had planned uh, bomb attacks. This comes unofficially. I'm not sure whether um, it will be confirmed in a day or two. But uh, Shivaganga, Trichy, Nagapatnam, Tutukudi, all these places were targets. So uh, you were about to say something. Yeah, sorry, uh, because we are uh, while we are on that Coimbatore Sangameshwara temple, I wanted to just add one little thing. Again, see, we have to talk to the locals about to understand the Puranas and the history. It's what is called as Thala Puranam. So in this particular street where this car had actually parked, there is a Ratham. There is a temple car. Yeah, actually, it should be called Ratham. It should not be temple car. It's yeah. not a car. You, yeah, yeah. you need 40 people that to is. pull it. Right, chariot, chariot, chariot. And, and and that's where the Utsava Murthy goes around, uh, and there will be typically a tapakulam. All those things are now kind of morphed into something much more mundane in city life. Except what what I have heard is that that particular uh, thing, see, it's an eyesore for the people living in that area, in the sense that except for one street, Rajesh ji, in that entire if you take a one kilometer square kilometer area around the place where the blast happened except for one street every other house is occupied by muslims every other house for them this temple 10th century temple and the temple car okay these are something like you know well you know why why not put a masjid here and and these kinds of things are now beginning to come through people's mind. So please, uh, viewers, remember that I I don't like to interrupt. Sometimes I can't help it because the context goes away afterwards. Sir, please go ahead and re recount the list. Sir, um, I mean, sir, that is a real problem. Whether you are, um, that is a real problem. Once you see an a temple or once you see some festival or of Hindu community or another any other community, these people get agitated. So that is one thing. So uh, uh, when this um, blast happened or suicide bombing, uh, I don't believe it was a suicide, uh, at, I mean, bombing there. Uh, something else happened. Maybe ha um, hand of God or act of God, as you say, or could be something else also, because I have a feeling that NIA knew more than what they say now because uh, there are a few things which i will come to that uh, later please, please. but uh, this incident this incident reminds me of another incident in kerala uh, that happened in kerala in early 90s you know there was an attempt to uh, uh, do a blast a bomb blast near uh, patmanava swami temple i uh, not many people remember that there was a uh, they brought in explosives there is a Maha Ganapati temple near the Patmanava Swami temple, which is called Padavangadi temple, which is manned by Indian army. Uh, Indian army owns that temple. So uh, they run the temple. So uh, that's a very famous temple, Padavangadi Sri Maha Ganapati temple. So this uh, explosives were brought into that temple uh, in an auto rickshaw and that auto rickshaw met with an accident and uh, the blast was uh, i mean it happened there itself and uh, i think one person was killed the man who brought in that those explosives so there was some uh, a similar incident in kerala also whether to call it an act of god or uh, sir, um, some, i mean that is not up to us but a similar incident happened here also so what i was trying to say is that there are, there is a history of three decades uh, um, of islamic uh, fundamentalism or extremism in Kerala that you know very well. So Black Deepavali was uh, one planning for them in Coimbatore or Tamil Nadu uh, in other places, as you say. 
but after that definitely the target was kerala because there are few things which i want to one or two things which i want to uh, tell you the first thing is um, not many people know about one riyas abu baker your viewers may not be familiar with that uh, name at all uh, you remember the easter bomb attack in uh, sri lanka uh, yes. that was in april april 2019 so after a few months one uh, this riya sabu baker he was uh, arrested in kerala by nia you know he was planning the same kind of attack in kerala bomb blast a serial bomb blast in kerala temples and he had uh, maps road uh, directions and details of many temples uh, hindu temples only many temples of kerala and he was arrested by nia at the right moment because otherwise uh, they actually averted a major mishap so this riya sabu baker had direct connection with um, irfan hashim irfan hashim was the mastermind of easter bomb attack in sri lanka and irfan hashim riya sabu baker they were very well connected with this uh, this group from ukkadam coimbatore ukkadam Uh, in which uh, um, i mean this uh, mubin and other people who are now arrested uh, are members of so all these people are connected there is a there is a link which is connecting all these groups so kerala had one uh, and uh, this riya sabu baker he has told the police uh, sorry nia that he was supposed to be one of the suicide bomber just like irfan hashim he was a mastermind but he was also one of the suicide bomber uh, in sri lankan attack he was killed in that uh, very famous uh, hotel uh, shangrila hotel in colombo that is my that is what i remember so just like that there was one riya sabu baker here and one uh, jeshi uh, what is his name mubi in coimbatore so all these people are connected how are they connected they are connected with um because they are inspired by is ideology and they are inspired by the talks of sakir naik uh, where uh, wherever you go i am sure uh, there was some report that in mobin's house also they found uh, sakir naik's video tapes and all it was uh, found in possession of riya sabu baker also and safar hashmi was also inspired by sakir naik so sakir naik is there islamic state is there islamic state khorasan why khorasan i hope you know the difference between the islamic state in syria and the islamic state khorasan many people no, please, uh, please please uh, please educate our viewers yeah. one just a little bit i i i'll i'll briefly tell you uh, islamic state uh, in syria and islamic state in khorasan iskp they say khorasan province uh, islamic state khorasan province they are actually two different organizations many people are not able to distinguish between them the is in uh, syria and uh, um, iraq and all it's almost finished as you know it is almost finished after the war and other things but iskp is not like that it is still very much organized and its khorasan province uh, is in, mostly in afghanistan some part in other neighboring countries also but islamic state khorasan is still very much in very much active and organized so that is what uh, the people who have gone from south india to islamic state areas they have actually gone to islamic state khorasan not to the other islamic state so uh, the thing is that the uh, the the danger or the threat still remains most of them belong to islamic state khorasan why i uh, mentioned islamic state khorasan i will come to that now there is one abdullah rashid so that is the second reason which i want to uh, mention why kerala next there is one abdullah rashid abdullah rashid uh, was the mastermind of is migration from kerala he was the team leader sort of thing he, he is a well educated person and uh, i think he was a doctor or something and uh, he went with his family and now reports say that he has been killed which i am not very sure but he is one person who has been inspiring all these people other than sakir naik 
um, he was one person who was inspiring these people. He had direct link with this Sahar Hashim, who was the mastermind of Colombo Blast, and he had direct link with this Riyas Abu Baker. And actually, Abdullah Rashid, he uh, there are tapes, video, or uh, I think, sorry, audio tapes, telephone calls, uh, in which he actually tells them, you people are cowards. You don't know what to do in Kerala. Uh, why don't you you uh, Why don't you just uh, barge into the Hindu tem uh, temple festivals and uh, explode? So, uh, things like that. He has actually mentioned Trishur Puram. I don't know whether you know Trishur Puram. Um, many of your viewers may not know. It is one of uh, it happens around uh, Trishur. Uh, Shiva temple, Vadakunada temple, where elephants are paraded and all. It's a very famous uh, cultural festival of Kerala. So actually he was telling them in order to prove your uh, loyalty towards IS or uh, towards um, um, ideology, you, uh, you just drive in a vehicle laden with explosives into uh, this Trishur Puram and show your loyalty. That is the kind of, uh, you know, uh, I mean, he was a uh, message he was giving these people. So there, uh, there was one person to actually a mentor who was telling them to conduct uh, serial bomb blast in Kerala also, just like what they did in Colombo and what they did in Coimbatore. So this is one point which I wanted to make. And the second point we have already mentioned, a lot of explosives coming to Kerala. And the third point is the infrastructure which they have in Kerala. Hello, uh, Rajeshi. Rajeshi, third, this yes, is yeah, August. Yeah. Sir, Rajeshi, this is August news. Eight thousand gelatin sticks mm -hmm. found abandoned in Kerala's Palakkad. Uh, we thought it yeah. was appropriate yeah. since you. This is in this this August, sir. I just wanted to yeah. point out to our viewers yeah. that this that, this happened yeah, yeah. very very recently. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, August 2022, 40 boxes. Yeah. Before yes. that, it was boxes of tomatoes two year, uh, in nine, uh, 20, two years back, November 2020. It was in tomato boxes. So 8,000, 7,000 gelatin sticks with uh, detonators. So this is not something very, uh, I mean, uh, silly or simple. So, but uh, you know, the uh, socio political. Uh, atmosphere that prevails in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So these things are not actually discussed. So and um, even many people, many journalists in Kerala, they don't know about Riya Sabu Baker and how dangerous that fellow was. He is still in uh, NIA custody. I mean, uh, he has been sentenced, I think, but uh, um, he was in NIA custody for a long, long time. So this is one thing. And uh, why Kerala next? Uh, there are reports. Um, Sriji, I think uh, many people don't know and it has not come out in the public domain also. But uh, there are reports indicating that NIA has caught hold of a uh, few documents that indicate that they were uh, they had links with a group that is that was planning something big in Kerala. Maybe uh, I don't want to uh, go into the details because actually I don't know the details, but there are reports that yes, uh, Kerala was the next target and in Kerala also they were planning something big. Anyway, they didn't do anything in Kerala so far because if an organization like PFI was, you know, uh, very prevalent here. Uh, it was present everywhere. So now that situation has changed. That is why after the PFI ban, there was a very violent uh, day of Hartal in Kerala. Wherever they could, they created a um, lot of, you know, uh, there were a lot of clashes, violent clashes, attacks, and other things. So now there is no issue. I mean, uh, they can uh, actually openly do things like that. So I expect that any time now. But um, the problem is that how ill-equipped the Kerala police or Tamil Nadu police uh, are in dealing with these things. They are very much uh, ill-trained uh, Ill or um, less trained in dealing with uh, such issues. That is um, uh, a major uh, cause of concern. That is what I feel. Thank you so much, Rajeshi. Um, in one of my rude cutoffs of you, you were beginning to list uh, the names of several temples that are, uh, you know, considered to be targets. Perhaps you can read that list, sir, and then I'll ask you my next question. 
Tamilnadu, Tamilnadu, Tamilnadu. Yes. Yeah, yes. Tamilnadu, I have just uh, names of places only, not temples. Um, okay. uh, I mean, what I, what I, uh, I, I had already mentioned that Shivaganga, Trichy, Nagapatnam, Tutukudi. These are the places they were planning. And now, just uh, before coming for this show, I heard that uh, uh, NA even got a, a list of temples uh, in and around Coimbatore where they were uh, planning to uh, attack. So that list is not with me right now, but it may come uh, in public domain after some time because uh, and naturally NAA will give a statement in the court, maybe tomorrow. So that will come out. But there is a definite, the, uh, it was not a lone attack or uh, a isolated uh, incident. It was part of uh, something very, very big, which went wrong somehow. I don't know how. But uh, as I said, um, act of God, other than act of God, I I have a belief that, I, or I suppose that NIA knew something more than uh, what they say in this case. Because uh, as you know, the incident happened on Sunday morning, early morning. And by Sunday evening, NIA, NIA team was there in Coimbatore. And next day, another team also joined them. So they were in Coimbatore. And uh, you know, five people were arrested by Tamil Nadu police after this. And there was a, immediately after coming into picture, NIA said, you go and arrest this person. There is an Afsar Khan, which uh, uh, they knew all the details. And I understand that Tamil Nadu police, I spoke to some journalists also. So they were telling me that uh, immediately after coming to picture, coming to, they said, you please go and arrest Afsar Khan. He is also one of the culprits. And they, Tamil Nadu had no clue at that time. And then they uh, caught hold of this Afsar Khan. And he was also part and parcel of the whole uh, episode. So uh, that means NIA knew a few things. But how this happened, only time will tell you. Because uh, I'm sure uh, that a group which were, uh, you know, actually questioned in 2019 by NIA, um, I mean, the surveillance would have been the basic thing to do on them. Tamil Nadu police may not have done that, but I think uh, the NIA that, you know, by going the, uh, by their working culture, they should have been definitely kept these people under surveillance. Then what went wrong or were they given a long rope uh, that uh, you go and uh, let us see how far you go and uh, let us intervene at the right time. Maybe that is also possible. This could be, I, I could be totally wrong, but you know, considering the whole scenario, these are my thoughts. Rajesh ji, you are never totally wrong. You're totally right. Um, I just want to tell our viewers, those of you who have not lived in either Kerala or Tamil Nadu, I want to tell you a bit of the lifestyle. This is very close to the equator. I think the, the Kanyakumari is probably nine degrees north of the equator. So what I'm trying to say is it gets hot very quickly. People are early to rise, early to bed kind of lifestyle. And you will see, you go to any temple, any temple. In fact, I will be so bold to say in Guruvayur, 90% of the population is Muslim. Did you, uh, Rajesh Pele probably knows that. Viewers may not know. Almost all the temple, uh, the stores that lead up to the temple are all run by Muslims. Why I'm saying that is not that there is something right or wrong. I'm just saying there is livelihood. But you go there are if you go to Guruvayur temple, you don't just stop there. There are six or seven other temples that you're supposed to visit. Some Shiva temple, some other temples and so on and so forth. So I, Guruvayur temple, the Sreshth uh, uh, time is Mohutam, best time to go is 4 a.m. Many people who come from outside will get up at early in the morning to take bath. There's a dress code also, you know, men can't wear top. Uh, women typically wear a particular kind of uh, uh, sari that is very, very popular in in Kerala, off-white with gold. Uh, jari. You, you understand what I'm saying, right? You understand the culture better. But what I'm trying to say is from that 4 a.m. after that darshanam, people will go to all these other temples. So by, you know, everywhere you go, the local population is already there. Hundreds of people praying, you know, many people, their day starts by taking shower or, uh, you know, uh, getting ready in the morning. First thing they do is go to the near temple, nearby temple. These are, these have been done for hundreds of years. Now look at what is happening. 
two types of problems that the south southern states are facing one is conversion the other is destruction and and both are hitting you so hard from both sides i mean i can say rajesh ji that nia needs to not go and select people from the police cadres but they need to have start having specialists who understand what really is going on how to smoke things out before it start becoming big and and uh, i mean i don't want to repeat again and again but rajesh ji you tell me am i saying anything wrong sir because i have been to so many temples morning is buzzing at activity yes uh, definitely kerala had uh, kerala still has that uh, culture uh, it's not 4 4 am actually it is 3 am in the morning so 3 am uh, okay. or even uh, sri patmanabh swami temple also it opens quite early in the morning and uh, we have darshan and there are a lot of people coming and um, even people like us uh, from our village if you are not in your house then you are in the temple in the morning uh, so uh, one after another everyone goes to the temple and comes back so if you are not seen in the house that means you have gone to the temple so it was quite natural but things are changing things have changed as you said uh, about conversion conversion is a big issue um and nobody actually even the census data is not coming out um uh, you you were mentioning about kanyagumari district as you know kanyagumari has a, you know you know you know a great culture had a great culture it has a history of temples and uh, temple related rituals and other things now uh, the conversion has happened in such a way that it is a christian dominated district Christian, Christian dominated district. Everyone knows that the Nadar community, almost ninety percent of them are uh, converted. So that happens in one side. But uh, the real issue, which uh, we are now discussing today, uh, actually something big happens. You said it has already happened. If you are expecting the kind of explosion or things like that, that may be that must not have happened so far so, for many reasons. But other than that, the infiltration. the uh, the level of uh, uh, what you say uh, the confidence that they have and the level of control they have on every uh, sphere of social life in kerala is much more than what you can imagine whether it is economy whether it is business whether it is uh, cultural cinema things like that every sphere of life everywhere that uh, domination has come and uh, unfortunately because of uh, communist ideology and i will straight away blame it on communist ideology because they are one people who just don't understand this dangerous thing so it has happened everywhere everywhere uh, even uh, i was uh, going through a tweet from a lady in iran she was mentioning uh, sri ji you must have also seen that she said uh, the iranian revolution was never a um, uh, islamic yes, uh, revolution is it was actually a leftist revolution where islamist also joined and once the revolution happened uh, islamist turned against communist this is happening everywhere them uh, in the world and finish them off finish them finish them off, finish yeah. them off. and uh, i have been telling my communist friends the same thing because malappuram district you know Yes. Kerala's um, uh, um, um, Muslim-dominated district. So uh, Malappuram district was actually awarded to uh, Muslims by EMS Sambudri Pad, no, none other than EMS Sambudri Pad, who was the Chief Minister of Kerala. Now you see in Malappuram, CPM is nowhere. It has become uh, a Muslim-dominated, not only socially or culturally or um, denomination-wise, politically also. no one uh, no one can win there other than muslim league um, uh, this party or some people supported by them so communist party is nowhere there so this is going to, these are the lessons that history gives you or indications that they give you but you are not able to understand so communist people they will never understand that they will always turn against uh, hindutva forces or they will always say that you are the people who are the culprit but actually uh hindus are just trying to defend themselves that they don't understand and or 
uh, they understand many of them understand and they pretend as if they don't understand the danger and uh, in kerala as, uh, you must have known i think we discussed once also the infiltration of pfi into police forces other forces and you know how softly these cases are handled one person lost his job because the evidence was pakka and nothing could be done about that because that person he used the police database and he simply copied it uh, copied from the database uh, the uh, names addresses of local rss leaders and gave it to uh, pfi leaders local pfi leaders so uh, he was caught red handed and he lost his job but there are other people three four five cases i uh, i know even after the ban one police officer was suspended uh, because he went to another police station to defend the pfa activists who were uh, apprehended by police uh, when they were indulging in violent activities and he, he has been suspended but i am sure nothing will happen and they will all happily come back uh, i don't know whether you heard about one case there is one case if i am not um, uh, i mean i can uh, please go ahead, briefly mention it yeah, yeah. see uh, i am uh, there was uh, one case in uh, Alap uh, sorry ernakulam district aluwa where fire force officers they trained they came in uniform and trained pfi cadres in fire and rescue activities can you imagine just a few months back and the district fire officer his name is kk shaiju uh, he was the man who was leading it and they trained these pfi cadres pfi cadres were in their uniform and the uh, fire safety officers were in their uniform it was a public event straight away did that and uh, uh, actually media reported and people like us made a lot of uh, protests and other things through media and uh, they were finally suspended he the district fire officer and three other officers just last week they were all taken back to service they were all taken so, back to service. So, uh, Rajesh ji, um, this, I just put up a story that there is a guy called C.A. Rauf who had holed up somewhere in the north and he has finally been apprehended by the NIA and he has a link with this. Guess what else is coming on social media? There's a picture of Mr. Mani Shankar Iyer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> having his picture taken with this person. Now, you can say, listen, somebody is in public life. I don't know who comes up to me and says, ask for a picture. I can't ask, are you from PFI? Are you from CIMI? Are you from RSS? I can't do all that. I am just saying. But why I'm saying this is, I don't know what the intent of that article, but definitely they said that this person has friends with, uh, has been friends with uh, Manishankar Ayer. <laughs> C.A. Rauf, they, they, you know, words fail me, really. Uh, I mean, how long do you think this is going to go on? When are these people going to realize that this is just the beginning and this is only going to go one way? There is no going back. There is no going back. India, for it to survive, they need to actually take go to the next gear in trying to stamp out some of these challenges. A uh, couple of things that I wanted to mention that viewers may not know if you have not seen Major Madan's uh, hang out in the morning today that's why i thought this was important to talk to us about the neighboring state kerala um, uh, rajesh pillaji hindu reported that the center had given a warning on the 19th about the impending possibility of uh, some sort of a dramatic strike and this is the no-brainer why because coimbatore is the second biggest city in tamil nadu out of the 30 plus petrol bombs that were thrown i think 22 or 23 were thrown at readers of the RSS living in and around Coimbatore yes. area. Huh? Yes. So yes. This, this, this is like these people are itching for a fight. Their you know radicalization has started a long time ago, and that has not ended. Yeah. Zakir Naik, P. Uruz wrote for four years continuously that this fellow needs to be extradited. Instead, what happened? Mr. Mahathir Mohammed was spewing venom at India. Luckily, that guy yes. has you know, been eased out from their coalition wars and so on and so forth. But the loser is Malaysia. India stopped importing palm oil from them. So, till that's today, true, true. Zakir Naik is still under the protection of the Malaysian government. They owe it 
to India to give, send that rascal back. He was also the one who inspired this Bangladesh cafe attack. I mean, yes. what more proof do they need? In fact, Zakir Naik escaped from India to Saudi Arabia first. And when India started applying pressure on Saudi Arabia, the guy escapes to Malaysia from there. That's true. I mean, that's true. But it's uh, it's not only yeah. Sakir Naik, sir. It's not only Sakir Naik. There are other people also. Yeah, I was uh, going to ask you that. Yeah. When, when, when we mention about Coimbatore blast, we should also mention what happened in 1998. Aluma. Aluma, you yes. remember that very well. Syed Ahmad Basha. Basha and his brother uh, Nawab Khan. Uh, right. Both are in jail. Uh, uh, you have a lot of contacts in Tamil Nadu. You please ask them how are they treated in jail and how many times they have got parole. Hmm. Uh, I, I feel that all the norms and other things were, you know, simply thrown out of window and they, were, they got a lot of uh, parole and other things and they are treated like VIPs in jail. This is my information. I could be totally wrong because I don't have any means to verify that. But this is what I hear. So that means and uh, uh, to tell you, uh, many of your viewers may know that the among the five people who were arrested, one of them is this uh, Basha's brother, uh, brother's Nawab son, Khan's son. Yes. Nawab Khan's son. So that means Aluma, it was banned. That is where we, we should be uh, talking about, discussing about what happens after PFI ban or how effective it is. Aluma uh, uh, still draws a lot of uh, influence or it is working underground. Uh, that's very clear because the same elements, same place, Ukadam, and same uh, activity, everything is happening after 24 years the same type of serial blast. So all this planning is there. The same people are behind the same family or uh, relatives. They are all there. So um, just banning Aluma has not helped at all. So that is one uh, realization that should happen at least now, because I have been always saying um, uh, even in national debates also, I participated after PFA ban. Um, um, when they asked uh, whether ban is enough, I said, no, I don't believe in bans. Actually, uh, you, you cannot ban an ideology or a way of thinking. You should dismantle their infrastructure using every means possible. Their fund collection, their um, training programs, their infiltration into our institutions and system. All this should be uh, really cut off. Then only this can happen. And it's not an easy task. You can actually ban anyone, but banning will not work. And in PFI case, that is why I said why Kerala continues to be dangerous. PFI has been banned. Its allied organizations have been banned, but uh, SDPA continues to function. And they say SDPA is a political party. Whether it is a political party or a social organization or NGO, it's the same ideology, same sort of uh, same pattern of working. It's the same ideology inspired by the same people. So SDPA can work and PFA cannot. I don't understand that. And SDPA, let me tell you, all the PFA elements have now migrated to SDPI. And SDPA is now coming up with a lot of campaigns, anti-drug campaign uh, in campuses and all. Every day they have some program. And uh, they even carry out... Uh, uh, anti drug uh, uh, campaign, I mean, uh, some uh, processions and other things with banners and all. So they want to keep their uh, cadres together. That is why they are doing all this. So, so uh, I mean, how does that ban help in that case? Of course, definitely. Uh, the brighter side is that, yes, uh, bank accounts have been freezed and uh, their fund flow must have been stopped and uh, most of their leaders, masterminds like uh, uh, these people, they Koya and other people, they are uh, inside. That is one thing. And you were mentioning about uh, Rof ha having photographed with Manishankar here. Sir, that is nothing. Uh, all these PFA leaders have every year they have this uh, iftar parties. They organize iftar parties and almost every political leader, including chief minister, opposition leader. And I have hundreds of photographs all over internet. Uh, 
uh, which shows all of them together. Yeah, this is the photo with Manishankarai. Yes, it is uh, raw folding. It is raw folding. And um, there are so many photographs all with all these people uh, hugging, making jokes with uh, Congress leaders like uh, Ramesh Chenitala sitting beside the Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan. It all happens. So they have some sort of, you know, um, acceptability, not some sort of a great extent of acceptability uh, in the Kerala political circle because of the concept regarding vote bank, nothing else. Vote bank, vote bank. Muslim League is one uh, is there, but uh, I think in my last uh, meeting with you also I said why Pinrai Vijayan is obliged to extremist elements this time because uh, Pinrai Vijayan and the LDF came to power for the second uh, time uh, in continuation only because of uh, the support from extremist Muslim. Uh, groups like PFI. That is the, I mean, if you go through their data of uh, election results and other things, that is something which is very clear. And let me tell you, uh, uh, there are 20 MPs, Lok Sabha representatives from Kerala, 20 constituencies, Lok Sabha. 19 of them are uh, UDF members, I mean, Congress uh, and he left members. I mean, Congress led the Democratic Front MPs are from Kerala. And there is only one lone MP from LDF. His name is Arif, uh, A.M. Arif, I think, Arif. And he was one leader who came out uh, uh, um, against PFI ban. He was, he was the first CPM leader to make noise, uh, saying that this ban is not right. Arif. So I need not tell you more than that. He is an LDF leader and the only LDF MP from Kerala. Why they lost all other seats? It's because of Shabarimala. Shabarimala impact and the UDF instead of BJP, they got advantage. That is another story. So only one MP from left front uh, and uh, that was Arif. And Arif was the first person to come out in the open and criticize PFA ban. He said, if you ban PFI, you should have banned uh, RSS also. And this ban was taken. Uh, I mean, it was a uh, not a well thought action or something like that, he said. And even uh, Chief Minister uh, Pinrai Vijayan, uh, he had a meeting with the senior police officials the day after the ban. And he said, you know, you handle them softly. Uh, don't create a feeling that it's a witch hunt. Are uh, there is an anti-national organization which has been banned by the central government and the chief minister of the state is telling them, I mean, um, uh, handle them softly. I don't understand. I mean, uh, no one will understand what is behind that. So, but uh, clear, clearly uh, LDF is has a soft corner and uh, with uh, PFI and PFI has taken complete advantage. Uh, of the situation. No doubt about that. So a long way to go, a lot of work to be done. And uh, Definitely. Viewers, all, all I can tell you is please like and share and subscribe to our channel. If you have not already done so, please click on the bell button for notifications. Uh, Rajesh Pillaji has been observing this for a long time. And there is a, rip, um, amount, uh, a certain amount of risk when we take up such things because People in the power don't want these truths to come out, especially in a state like Kerala. You drive down Kerala, there'll be 10 meetings along that one big national highway. There'll be that 10 meetings, each guy, each meeting will be only 15 people. If one guy talking and 14 people listening. There is always politics 24 7. Kerala is one of the most politically active uh, state in the country. The results don't show what the amount of activism there is. Everything people have time to discuss, there's that, so on and so forth, 100% literate. And But the problem is, at the end of the day, there is a slow cooking going on. The temples are getting destroyed. And, and this is the thing that is of the most concern. Uh, one last question before we go, Rajeshji. You know, uh, I've been in Coimbatore for some uh, period of time in the recent months. What I'm noticing every time I drive by roads, right? Eight o'clock, nine o'clock, these biryani shops are starting. 
uh, and they are so brightly lit around them there is complete darkness this thing will be standing out it and i don't know what time they close i don't stay up that late but this has been something that has been flagged by uh, one of our speakers on our tamil channel so that 20000 shops like this have come up and they are all basically beef biryani it starts at around 8 9 in the night and goes all the way through the night it is a way to make eating beef as being cool because they say that uh, in uh, many of the ipl tournaments a lot of these ads are coming out with you know the be cool eat these foods and so on and so forth is that similar thing that is happening in kerala also or is it just exported to tamil nadu right now <laughs> definitely definitely as i i was also mentioning about that you know the uh influence that these people are making over the uh, our customs our habits our social life our eating habits everything everything uh beef eating uh, uh is something they are promoting with vengeance even in films even in films there are i can at least uh, list uh, 10 films where you know uh, the characters they talk between themselves very casually or maybe on, uh, on purpose but about beef how beef is good how it is good for us or what a taste some things like that so it is naturally giving an idea i mean uh, the film world in kerala the mollywood is controlled by something called a matanjeri mafia matanjeri mafia is connected with the islamic uh, uh, fundamentalist or extremists that is one another thing so they are controlling because the funds you know the funds uh is with them so that is happening uh so there is something which uh, always glorifies beef eating and beef is something which doesn't suit keralaites or the climate here or our soil it was never there 50 years back yes uh, maybe some very few people used to eat beef or something like that i don't know but it was never a um, uh, state menu or uh, Um, a common food at all so it happened only in the last uh, 20 30 years or 20 25 years and uh, almost all the shops as you mentioned have uh, arabian names also now it has come down i mean they have changed the name otherwise it it will be al saj al what all so now maybe uh, it has come down a bit but uh, most of the shops will be array uh, serving uh, um, beef porota porota maida porota kerala porota they call it and both of them are very dangerous food i mean um, for kerala's uh, climate also it is um, um, affecting everyone i mean there are many people who are you know, if you go to the medical colleges and all you will understand that but they are promoting it with a vengeance and let me also tell you uh you remember that uh, beef ban controversy uh, yes so uh, there were a lot of protest in kerala and there is one uh, congress leader uh, in north kerala he organized a protest march and uh, they had a um, uh, calf a small calf actually it was a cow only not beef or i mean the other thing. a cow was cut in front of camera uh, in his presence and that person is still there in the uh, he was suspended for one month and he was taken back and he was there uh, in Raj, uh, rahul gandhi's long march also so so uh, you understand how the culture is is uh, everyone uh, promotes that kind of thing and it uh, it's a social influence that they have created over three decades it's not an easy task to otherwise people should be made aware uh see your lifestyle your culture your food habits are not this this is not your culture this is not your food habit everyone all over the world uh, any country or uh, any group of people they have food habits according to the climate and according to the uh, you know atmosphere or what all connected with uh, nature but in kerala it is something Uh, you are creating an arabia or you are creating a middle east here which is taught which totally goes against the uh, not only culture uh, climate and the uh, actual food that in kerala uh, you know what we used to eat um, some maybe some 30 40 years back it was rice basically rice a uh, lot of vegetables and fish fish was one thing which was very common 
now everything has been replaced with this uh, beef parotta thing so naturally and uh, it shows on the health also so it is Thank promoted so with a vengeance it's promoted with a vengeance you know um, i'm seeing some comments saying that it is not cow meat but it is buffalo meat guys think about this don't you drink buffalo's milk <laughs> today when you are buying milk from the shop avin or anything the button milk or you know sachet do you know if it is cow's milk or buffalo's milk if you are willing to take buffalo as a substitute for cow then eating buffalo meat is just as objectionable that's my take i i could be wrong rajesh ji this has been an eye opener of a conversation in fact you and i we were talking whether you know is it uh, is it going to peak the whole people's interest it absolutely does the reason is what we are talking about is not just today's happenings we are going back in time yes. how things have changed and how we need to go back and resurrect that thing come back to a place where you know at the end of the day we are all sanatanis i mean i i always keep saying this thing but the law is the same nobody should feel special this is for all those who are thinking that i am not a hindu so these laws don't apply to me that is the problem that is really the problem that mindset has to change and again rajesh ji thank you so much for taking time out of your thank you, saturday ji. night thank you. <laughs> saturday night and uh, it was wonderful talking to you viewers please do like share and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell button for notification we don't have any questions today with just a lot of comments so i think we are going to wrap up now namaskar sir namaste namaste namaskar